Welcome back to Sports World. Time to talk motorsport. And Neil Crompton, there's only one topic to talk about, I guess. Certainly is, and it's Peter Brock this week. What a yeah. drama in the last seven days for the Holden dealer team. I'm not kidding. I mean, it's, uh, it's been absolutely amazing. It's a real surprise, and uh, so close to the Touring Car Championship, and of course the World Touring Car title, I think that's what has caught everybody by surprise. Yeah. Yeah. There certainly has been big news in motorsport circles this week, and it's the split between Holden and Peter Brock. After 17 years together, the long and highly successful relationship fell apart on Thursday. It seems to most of us that this decay between the two is inconceivable. How could the all Aussie boy racer next door fall out with the people that backed him so heavily he became a genuine household name? Brock, the guy in the Vegemite ads, the king of the mountain, touring car champion, champion of the general's cause selling the true blue Holden. Well, apparently, it's all over. Now, to set the scene, this brief report will bring you up to date with part of how this happened. When Peter Brock took over the Holden dealer team from John Shepherd, it was for two reasons. One, to continue his racing activities, and two, to set up a special vehicles division. Special vehicles was a abrupt concept aimed at providing the dealer network that supported the team with a payback, an advantage over their rivals in the form of an exclusively built car only available to those in the consortium. For their part, General Motors, as they were known then, were happy to wholesale vehicles to Brock in a raw package, allowing special vehicles the opportunity to trick the cars out and resell them through the supportive dealer network. In mid-84, Brock met a chiropractor by the name of Dr. Eric Dowker. He helped to rejuvenate a tired and wrung out Brock. Peter Perfect gave up smoking, improved his diet and seemed ready to take on the business world. Soon after, the speculation and rumours started regarding the Dowker Brock links to Orgone Energy and the Energy Polarizer. The issue has festered since then. Key personnel left the team, and despite the pressure to shelve the unconventional concept, Brock has proceeded. Now he's launched a car that GM will not endorse, and that led to Thursday's upheaval. And I'm pleased to say that in our Melbourne studio we have Peter Brock. Good morning, Peter. Good morning. Thanks very much for joining us. That's Peter, fine. I guess the first question, have you bitten the hand that feeds you? No, I think the uh, shoe might be on the other foot, uh, and really I think we should get to the actual issues, this uh, rubbish that uh, I hear you all talking about, uh, Dr. Dowker and energy polarisers and what have you, have absolutely nothing to do with the true nature of the problem, and it's just a smokescreen that uh, General Motors have put out to uh, really try and not allow me to manufacture a car for export, which is that car circulating on the podium behind me, a new director that we released last Friday night. Uh, our motor cars, our road cars, are becoming uh, increasingly more popular, have been getting better and better accolades from the press, despite the, uh, the, uh, some of our detractors that might uh, talk about me personally or uh, some of my colleagues. They all admit that our cars are absolutely fabulous. And therein lies the real story, because the real story is that uh, Brock is becoming a little bit too independent. Now, I'm, I'm uh, very happy to continue any s association with uh, Holden as long as it is mutually uh, to our satisfaction. And uh, I'm more than surprised at the uh, current situation we find ourselves in. But Peter, isn't it true to say that HMC uh, to say the least, offended by the Perry integration and the energy polarizer, and certainly no, very not disappointed at all. that, uh, no, that's that you wouldn't make rubbish. the director available to them. No, I'm sorry that the uh, the problem is that the uh, the car that's on the podium behind us is the real issue, and I'm not going to be uh, distracted by uh, other people being persuaded by General Motors that other is uh, you know, that otherwise is the truth. The all truth right. is, it's the car. Well, yet on February the 12th, Peter, you agreed with General Motors at the time that you would remove the energy polarizer issue from the car let's, and proceed Let's get to this quite clear. The polarizer has not been fitted since the beginning of December. Holden are quite happy that it hasn't been fitted. They've been here, they've inspected cars. That is not one of the points they are even uh, talking about. Let's get on to the real issues. Okay, well the real issue, according to the people that I've spoken to at General Motors, is that you would not make the director available to them for review and ADR submission. The director was made available to them in July, the, the specifications, detailed specifications, July the 3rd last year. They made the, the director was uh, uh, made available to them for, for testing and for approval before it was sent overseas. There are now two directors overseas despite what the press is saying. One is in North America, one is in England, one is uh, achieving uh, UK specification approval, the other is in, uh, in uh, America and two similar cars 
are going about type approval, cars I sent a year earlier, and this particular car is getting marketing approval. Now, uh, when General Motors said they hadn't seen the car, I had to say, look, I'm sorry, but you have seen it, you have approved it, and the car I'm releasing is a show car, it is not for sale. However, type approval is uh, being sought and it's just around the corner. In the meantime, I have a fourth car, which is here at our special vehicles factory. You may take that away, look at it, drive it, measure it, and do whatever you like. But it's simply a, a test prototype. Now, they didn't take that particular car. They came back to me in the end and said, the true story is, we don't want you to release the car. You've satisfied all our other demands. I've got documentary evidence to prove that, and I know that I uh, wrap a fax copies of that to your uh, own news desk, and you would have them there. And the only point of contention, in fact, was the car launch must not go ahead. Now, the car launch represents potential orders and uh, it's just too big a business and uh, too important for Australia to ignore. Nevertheless, Peter, sorry, uh, Wilco, okay. you now find yourself without General Motors backing. So despite whatever is right or wrong in this issue, and I don't really want to dwell on a current affairs type situation with you on a sports show, yep. you no longer have General Motors. Now, with that, do you therefore think that perhaps you've mishandled this affair because that was the, the marriage made in heaven? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, I've had a solicitor talking to the GM legal department for the last week, and his final comment to me was, this defies logic. Now, I don't think the door is closed by any stretch of the imagination, but I am surprised at the statements that have been made by Holden, and I'm not prepared to, uh, to really um, get into that, onto those issues. All I do say is that we do have a great product here, which is an important manufacturing car. On the motor racing front, we have motor racing cars there which will undergo the normal research and development programs that we've been conducting over the last few years. We have been the company that conduct that on behalf of General Motors, not the other way around. And that is most important for people to understand. Peter, General Motors say that this is a partnership and you've changed the rules of the partnership and now you're becoming the tail trying to wag the dog. Yes, I'm afraid that's probably summed it up very accurately, Gary. Uh, the, the fact is that uh, this particular car that uh, in question, the director, does represent a motor car that puts Brock into a, into a manufacturing situation. And where I've been a, part, a car modifier or a part supplier, uh, I now would become a manufacturer if I built that car. And uh, there is a change in rules, that's very true. And uh, perhaps the uh, situation that is uh, at hand is uh, the way that things will have to go. I'm not too sure on that. I, I do believe we need cooperation at this particular time because the Australian economy isn't doing too well. And I think we all need to uh, cooperate and to ensure our survival in a very tough business situation. But GMH say that they are the manufacturer, not you. And can you manufacture a car without GMH? Well, one imagines that it's an uphill battle. And uh, for some time now, I have been manufacturing components for Holden. And I have been finishing off the manufacture of those cars at this plant. We built the VL Group A cars here. And uh, our component uh, input into those cars was quite considerable and we would like to think that that sort of business arrangement could continue. Uh, however, uh, the rules and reg sorry, the, the reasons for the, uh, I guess, the, uh, um, the disapproval of, a, uh, of this director is a little bit amazing because I think Australia needs Australian enterprise going at it full bore and uh, that's what I intend to do. Peter, what about the report this morning that your colleague John Harvey has suggested that the warning bells have been sounded to you but you're not hearing them. Yeah, well, Does that concern I, you? I, I saw that quoted. Uh, one of my people just showed me that line. They wouldn't allow me to insult my eyeballs to read the rest of the rubbish that was written. Well, but, you're talking uh, about uh, the Phil John Scott. Harvey comment. Uh, don't, well, it, if it uh, Phil's a fairly good journalist, and that's something that uh, well, I thought that, that, you've... that particular write-up was disgraceful, and uh, I've got that's the only comment I'll make on it. The, the other point is, I have uh, been fully aware. And I'm sure that uh, anyone who reads thoroughly the uh, correspondence that has taken place between myself and GM or Holden officials, both here and overseas, in the last year would know that uh, 
I've been fully aware of uh, the situation. Peter, you've also, uh, you said before that you didn't uh, want to discuss Dr. Eric Dowker and, and the energy polarizer, uh, but he is part and parcel of the new car, as we understand it, and, yes. and uh, is credited as being a co-designer of the car. That's very true. Well, GMH say that he's not part and parcel of the deal that was made with you in the first place. That's very true. Things change, and things change in life, and people have to understand that. Uh, one, one of the things that uh, we have done with this motor car, of course, is design it ourselves. I'm responsible for the, uh, the chassis development, uh, the interior appointments, the uh, styling features on the car. And uh, I, I guess that uh, if you, I'd like people to sort of look at the car and say, hey, isn't that a good car? Read what uh, different people who've driven that car have said. Now, I didn't read one story on the comments on how good the car is. The car is fabulous. It drives fabulously. The Americans admit it is very, very good. And surely that is something we sh we, I'm, a, I'm permitted to be proud of. And I also believe it's something that I could assume other people would comment on and say, Brock, how come a small organisation like yours manufactured a car, albeit a prototype car, that is that good? And well, I think that's a real issue. Well, Peter, thanks very much for talking with us this morning. I'm sorry I'll have to cut it short there, but uh, we appreciate your time in helping to explain what is obviously a very complex situation. We yes. look forward to seeing you next weekend. Thank you. We'll take a break on sports. We'll be back in just a moment. While in the world of motor racing, a 17-year association ends between Peter Brock and Holden. And it's all because really of an energy uh, polarizer. Circulating behind me there, our new director, which uh, is a vehicle which has achieved a lot of acclaim in Europe and America. And uh, certainly the... Uh, marketing organisations in those particular countries uh, want to buy a number of those vehicles, a vast number of those vehicles, which of course would do, have a tremendous effect on Australia's uh, foreign exchange. We have uh, a potential at the moment, Danny, of um, exporting uh, 5,000 uh, 5, vehicles a year. I hate putting a figure on these things, but the, the marketing uh, people overseas have done their sums and they're saying that's the sort of figure. And that represents $250 million per annum. And as an Australian, I think it's an absolute disgrace that uh, a company would try to stop Australia from trading itself out of the uh, current predicament this country uh, uh, is faced with. I'll certainly be looking at my options over the weekend and I'm not about to give in. I mean, I'm as determined on this issue as what I am on the starting grid of Bathurst, I can assure you of that.